Welcome to the workshop. We've seen a lot on using the breadth first search algorithm, and today is another example of exactly that. We want to use the breadth first search algorithm to find a spanning tree for the graph that we've been given. So remember that a spanning tree is just a, uh, a tree which uses edges of the graph to cover all of the vertices from the graph. Uh, but we want to make sure, again, that it's a tree. Uh, so it needs to be connected, and it needs to uh, contain all of the vertices and contain no cycles. So essentially, we're just looking for a minimal number of edges to have a connected, uh, a connected graph containing the same vertices. Excellent. So to use the breadth first search algorithm, uh, we need to choose a vertex, and then find the distance from that vertex to all other vertices. So let's choose A. Of course, A is a distance of zero from itself, and the predecessor in the shortest path is nothing because it's just the point A. So we're using the uh, breadth first search algorithm in exactly the same way that we have been. We label uh, the vertices with a distance that they are from A, and the vertex that precedes them in the shortest path. So adjacent to A are the vertices F and E. So F is a distance of 1 from A, and E is a distance of 1 from A. So A precedes it in the shortest path. A to E, A to F. Excellent. There are no other vertices that are adjacent to A, so we move on to look at the things that are a distance of 2 away from A, uh, that is the things that are adjacent to F and E. Excellent. So we'll notice that adjacent to F are G and B, but those are both also adjacent to E. So with both of these vertices, they'll be labeled with a distance of 2 from A. However, we have to make sure that we choose the appropriate predecessor. So choosing the one that comes first alphabetically, E comes before F, so E is the predecessor in both of these cases. All right, E is also adjacent to C, so that means that C is a distance of two away with predecessor E, and that is all of the items which are adjacent to E uh, and F, of course. All right, so uh, we're almost done. We just need to find the things that are now a distance of 3 away. Uh, so that includes for us, well, adjacent to newly labeled C is G, but that's already labeled, E, but that's already labeled, B, but that's already labeled, and D. Excellent. So D is not labeled, so we can say that D is a distance of 3 from A with predecessor. So we've completed the search algorithm, the breadth first search algorithm. At this point, to construct our, uh, our spanning tree from the breadth first search algorithm, we simply trace along each of the shortest paths. So uh, let's see here, or we simply connect each vertex to its predecessor. That's a little bit easier way to think about it. So uh, A has no predecessor, B has predecessor. So we just connect B to E. Uh, let's see here. Two has predecessor, or sorry, C has predecessor E, so we connect those two. And then we have D has predecessor C, so we connect those two. E has predecessor A, so I'm just following along here. A, B, C, D, E. That's the pattern, if you will. Uh, e has predecessor A, excellent, and then down to F, F has predecessor A, so we can include this edge, and G has predecessor E as well, so we include this edge. Now what we have is we have a new graph in blue here that is in fact a tree. And this tree contains all of the vertices of our graph, hence it is a spanning tree of our graph. 
Excellent. So we can give, uh, if we want to talk about the edge set of our tree, of course it, contain, it contains the same vertices as the graph uh, that we were given. So the spanning tree has the edges. Now let's see here, it has edge A, edge B, edge E. Uh, let's see, it has edge F, and it has edge G. And uh, this guy I hadn't labeled, but this is edge L. Call it L. Excellent. So this is our edge set for the spanning tree. And if you wanted to have a brief justification for having a spanning tree, if you uh, wanted to make sure that you don't have any cycles, that would be fine. That could be a little bit taxing in terms of, uh, or it's really difficult to see what exactly is going on. So maybe you'd have to recopy this graph uh, or the spanning tree uh, as just the tree itself. But if you have a tree with seven vertices, as we have here, then it should have seven minus one edges, which would be six. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six edges. So we know uh, that we have a spanning tree, right? If we consider the equivalencies for a spanning tree, uh, then having exactly n vertices and n minus one edges would be part of that. Uh, we just need to make sure that we have one additional characteristic. Uh, for example, uh, we can see that it's connected, right? Everything is connected to A through its shortest path. So it's connected and it satisfies uh, vertex and uh, edge relationship. So this is our tree. So that gives the edge set of our tree. Excellent. Uh, hopefully that was a little bit helpful for you guys in uh, understanding what a spanning tree is as well as how to find one without having to pick edges or delete cycles. So this is a very nice methodical way in which you can find a spanning tree. We'll also consider what's called the depth first search algorithm. And that will also give us a way of identifying spanning trees uh, for a graph. So I'll see you guys shortly back in the workshop with another algorithm for finding spanning.